So I am starting the recording. Welcome to our Thursday book launch. I'm Malika Albrecht, and I'm very grateful to be here in good company and to be celebrating someone who is fabulous, and that's why we're here. Um, this is Judy Cronenfield's fifth book, uh, Groaning and Singing, and there is um, a link in the chat section to um, order the book if you haven't already done so. We've already been talking about a couple people have reviewed the book, so I look forward to kind of having y'all here too. Um, so we can all talk together. Uh, the bio is in there. Um, I'm not going to do too much of an overview because I really want to just listen to Judy read from this collection. Uh, her four previous collections include Bird Flying Through the Banquet, and that was Future Cycle as well, 2017. Um, Shimmer was from uh, Word Tech, and that came out in 2012, and Light Lowering and Diminish Sevenths. Uh, it was the second edition, Atrium House in 2012, winner of the Litchfield Review Poetry Book Prize for 2007. Her poems have appeared in a variety of all our favorite magazines. Oh, these are beautiful. Cider Press Review, Ghost Town, New Ohio Press, one which is uh, Jakar Press, Rattle, Slant. And with no further ado, I am going to say a few things. The chat section stays pretty active. Judy, I will mind that so you don't have to kind of multitask. Oh, that's wonderful. Push. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. And I will send that entire chat section to you because I love how oftentimes a line will resonate with several people and at the same time we'll quote it in the chat section so I think you really you know that's something that you'll really enjoy reading fabulous. of course I will so appreciate it you're so welcome I'm just really grateful that you're here to uh, celebrate with us so I'm going to make you the spotlight and um, I remind everybody to, if you have forgotten, just go ahead and mute your microphone and um, that way we can focus on uh, listening. All right, I'm coming to you. And we just had somebody that I had to put into uh, from the chat section, I mean, from okay. the waiting room. Good. There we go. You are spotlighted. Thank you so Alrighty. much for being here. Whoops, now I've just got to get my document back up. All right, there we are. <laughs> okay, I'm going to begin with a poem that is a teacher's poem in some sense. Non-teaching day. I drive by a long line of students as they labor up the hill to campus in the rare California rain, holding umbrellas stiffly in front of their chests the way they'd hold candles in a procession. They advance singly, not talking, the steady tick of the rain seeming to quiet them and turn their thoughts inward. And each of them alcoved in his private space, achieving the hill's crest where I stop at the light, appears to me briefly dignified as a figure in high relief with book or pen or pastoral staff on a cathedral porch. All day while I busy myself with my own rounds, I will think of them flowing inward and outward to the sound of bells, their hearts so carefully contained like brimming bowls of guarded water carried from a desert well. That poem is a little bit about the privacy of the self. Um, and in a sense, this one is too, although a different tack. It's, it's, it's really a dramatic monologue spoken by a British man. And it started when I saw this uh, poem, this, sorry, this article, who can think of anything but poems? <laughs> this article in the LA Times with the headline, Britain makes loneliness a cabinet level concern. And the title of the poem is, letter to the Ministry of Loneliness. And then again, it's the man, the British man speaking. I take round trips on the tube during morning rush hour. I stand up for maximum contact for the warmth and pressure of other bodies and inhale the steam of coffee and cigarette breaths. I offer to walk my busy neighbor's kids to school. Their brittle voices ring in the icy air as if belonging to another universe. 
I try to strike up conversations at the market where I buy a single item daily, a bun or tart. I stick to apolitical topics, the BMW's windscreen smashed by a flying cabbage, Saddam Hussein's romantic novel. Then I am home alone again. I put on the kettle for a cup of but the quiet is not lovely, nor the enclosure of my own body. Everything's supposed to be relative, unless one's loneliness is absolute. So that one, and the first one, a little bit about the privacy of the self or the unreachable self. And this longer one is related to that subject in a way, but a little bit of the other side. Charm. My freshman year boyfriend, the slick dancer from a lovely New England home back in the double standard 60s, almost charmed the pants off my prim mother. And I learned later had been engaged in the gang rape of a towny girl. Didn't Jeffrey Dahmer have charm and Ted Bundy? It's enough to make you put on tiger skins and seek the desert. Yet, sometimes I cannot feel my face until I don my smiling interaction mask, alone in my blue room, stewing in my own juices. I begin to dissolve, then evaporate. I need the press of others to make me condense, though my attempt at charm Fashion to interact <laughs> can feel like an invader surrounded by leukocytes, utterly resisted. Still, talking on the phone this morning, asking a favor of a friend, I felt my cheeks chunk up with goodwill and my internal organs all peacefully nestle. This afternoon, even my dog put on the dog of good behavior healing properly as if trained when my tiny visiting grandson held his leash for his walk. And as I apply my lip gloss and blush this evening before going out, bizarrely, I smile at myself, trying to disarm my deep doubt, charmer and charmed at once. Bless us all social beasts that we are, we dish up smiles. We laugh in self-deprecation as we flick cookie crumbs from our lips. We try to lift our blue-footed booby feet in sync with the potential mates, to lubricate the wheels of social traffic with our luscious dimples, as if we could soften the world and shape it to our needs our moon faces beaming on our compatriots, dark sides sweetly hidden. Okay, right. this next poem is a childhood, a kind of composite childhood memory. Memory is probably the single theme that occupies almost every book that I've written, as well as some other things, but that one's very, very dominant. So. This poem has the word uh, matryoshkas in it, and those are, it means little mother, and those are, well, we think of them as dolls, they're not dolls in the usual sense, but those Russian dolls of nesting figures, um, where the tiniest one, the most enclosed. Tiny apartment, early girlhood, recall. Our three rooms were once the still center of the snug world like the earth in the pre-Copernican universe around which the immutable sun, planets and stars whirred on celestial spheres nested like matryoshkas. Summer mornings, I lay late, regal in my bed, suspended stories from the grimy city streets, watching stripes of sunlight flush and vanish on the wall. Hearing the music of the blinds mother had tilted open while I slept 
as they swung out from the window, cracked for the breezes cool burst and clattered back. Winter afternoons, stiff wrapped in coat, hat, boots, scarf, mittens, lint on my collar, lifted away by mother's spit-licked fingertip. I ventured out with her to the eternal village, grocer, cobbler, tailor, butcher, counting the icy steps there and back in groups of 10, like an incantation. Always then on our return, suddenly unbearable coats were shucked in the hall. Keys jingled into the figured bowl. Packages were dropped with mother's sigh of relief and our frozen cheeks tingling thawed in the steamy hothouse heat. Once the heavy door of our apartment opened and shut. Okay. Okay, this is a longer poem and it certainly um, is concerned with that theme of memory, which has absorbed me from uh, light lowering and diminished sevens onwards and maybe before. <laughs> um, the poem is called Saving the Dead and it has an epigraph. Our memory is the only help that is left to them. Theodore Adorno. I'm gonna stop for a second and get a sip of water. Saving the dead. We carry them inside us like persons still unborn, as if everything they might be again awaited them. The bodies of our mothers before we were born, the once coquettish bodies of our prim mothers. My mother balanced on a honeymoon hayrick with my father, his palm sweeping her face towards his for a kiss, a white hibiscus flower blowing in her black, black hair. The bodies of our fathers, flat bellied in their crisp pressed uniforms, standing near the wings of the flying fortress on the deck of the Massachusetts. My father grins at a monkey on his lifted arm on a tiny island purpose-built refueling stop. All those kept safe for us by luck. Time startled and lurching forward, we still carry them. The bodies of our mothers rocking with ours, groaning with us when we are ill. The smell still in my nose of my mother's richly metallic fertile blood on the cotex in the bathroom, the carving out of her womb and so many others, the decades beating furiously away, the long ah of their sighs as they settle into our warm cars to be taken to the doctors. The bodies of our fathers their huge hands under our backs as they teach us how to float. Their sturdy shoulders we ride into the breakers. My father's arms cradling my four-year-old body zonked on the cherries I stole from a tray of Manhattans at an aunt's wedding. Home we go, home on the subway. The careless crowding generations, the cracking of their chests, their plaintive reedy cheeps, but I enjoy it when we urge them not to eat fast food. We carry them, their years fanned out again, unshelved as we are carried towards the indignities of our own bodies. We are together, undone by time, about to be undone, a done, undone, about to be undone by the bodies that carry us. And in me, my authors dream again as I dream, imagining my progeny rebirthing me in all my hope, a lustrous dream of being carried forward. Okay. 
Okay. So the body theme continues in this poem that's also about that length um, and is a dramatic monologue in the voice of Scare Crone. Scare Crone. I know I'm going to look down at my thumb tomorrow morning and see a wen sprung up like a mushroom overnight, the first step of a goose stepping cancer. Or at least that's how I'm thinking, driving home from visiting my coeval friend whose body's a clumpy puddle, a slumping pudding who, as we leave for the restaurant, squashes an ancient discolored cap over her white stubbled head. She cannot care, that scares me so, around which the black crows circle, cawing, and who's so goddamned unself-pitying. I pity, I admire, growing fiercer for music, 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 not to be stuck in the musty corner at the living dance, drooping wall weed in ill-fitting frumpy skin. I want to throw shots back into my open mouth, let my delicate stomach rebel and throw up all the virtues, exceptions, patience, dignity in decline. I'm not going to stock pretty leak control panties or plan ahead for babbling on the heath. Though I can see my own crows coming to roost, the crow of bone crumble, the crow of dental devastation, the crow of deranged feet. But the black ox has not yet trod definitively on my toe. And so my luxury, I hate the crows that get in my face and try to fend them off. This one feathers mangy with parasites who waddles near my right eye wearing a groove. This one twig tool held in his beak who works his signature trefoil by my left. I shimmer my eyelids wave my hands, though their cousins flock to my lips as if digging the furrows above and below will yield seeds, though they land on my fingers, my arms, though I'm on the train to nightmare, though I'm on the train to scare, I don my flowy clothes and shining like shook foil, dance in my glitter and glow. Soul that that shining like shook foil is from Hopkins, <laughs> whom I love, and wrote a uh, honors thesis on when I was in college. So it sticks. So there's two medium sized poems and three very short ones. I think the time is okay, but if, if I am wrong, stop me. Okay. Now, I am happy to live in the ken of canines to be taken in by their gaze and to gaze on them for the long moments of saying nothing. I like to wait out the nano delay, a bacon bit in my palm under a cartilaginous nose until a nostril quivers and to imagine all 300 million olfactory receptors sieving the air. I love the warmth of mammalian weight, gift wrapped in fur, the soothe to my fingers of flanks. I would have dogs teach me how to lie on the lawn with no purpose more than the grass has, to breathe in the sun, or to sit on the sofa, chin on the sill, regarding the window all afternoon. Now that my aching hip and knee make me want to mule at 3 a.m., now that so many friends I romped with are fading or gone, <coughs> if any joy comes, sorry, if any joy comes, 
I want it to spin me around so my feet leave the ground. I want to grab whatever treat the world throws into my mouth, to chew it at once and completely, without nostalgia, without shame. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm getting over cold, so I'm gonna take a second here to cough. <laughs> and get a good lunk of water, which I hope will help, but it's not certain. <laughs> Gold, such rare visits. And usually on the third day, my middle-aged son living a continent and an ocean away says, as if he's had a chance to ponder it. And it's quite a pleasant surprise. It's really nice to see you, Mom. And gives me a quick embrace, like a light wool shawl stolen from my shoulders, just as I begin to appreciate its warmth. Which is notable, nevertheless, because his greeting and goodbye hugs always preserve the space between us, like a band of insulating air, and make me think of the way men make even quicker work of mutual pats on the back. <laughs> but this time he was in the kitchen, rinsing dishes for the machine. And I was ferrying the last ones from the table. <coughs> Sorry, and everyone else was, I don't know, blocked out by the shine when he said, it's really nice to see you, mom. Can I have a hug? Praise memories pushed down storage, unerased. Praise swift retrieval. And of course, of course, I said, depositing my dishes on the counter with tempered alacrity. It feels good to hug you, mom, he said, during the long seconds beaten out like gold to blazing brilliance and to hug you too. Thickly, I murmured. I'm going to take a tiny break here. <laughs> Just three more very short poems if there's time. There is definitely time. Please okay. keep reading. Okay. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I can't wait, to, uh, wait for you to see some of these comments. <laughs> I can't wait to see them. Okay. Let me get down here and hope. I had this delayed cough, which is partially from speaking a lot uh, and also has something to do with a kind of toxic medicine that I take to void off a recurrence of the cancer I had last year. So, um. <laughs> It's a challenge. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, just take your time. If you need more water, <laughs> I'll read some of the comments to you. Okay. So uh, wrote, uh, Rose uh, Mary just wrote, makes me all mushy. <laughs> the last one about your son. Yeah. Yeah, and me quite too. Of us. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. And um, without nostalgia, without shame about the dog poem resonated. Yeah. Several of us put that up there. Nice. Yeah. Great. And uh, somebody else wrote, wow, just wow, damn crows. That was Mary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Those crows. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. I think I'm better, a little better. Good. So thank you so much, Malika. Yeah. That was great. Three very short poems. Stillness. <clears throat> Stillness, late afternoon, December, Southern California. As if an invisible bell had been dropped over the world. The leaves of the willow stopped swaying back and forth like a porch swing. The feathery Palo Verde stopped dusting the sky. The long gold light lay down. Shadows pooled on lawns. Every wrapped thing paid the utmost attention, waiting. If ever I had been, I had been that quiet, listening, who knows? what I would have heard. <coughs> Sorry. 
girl brushing her hair in a window. <clears throat> you round a highway curve as you drive through an unknown city on the way to somewhere else and glimpse in a window's dim proscenium, curtain of shadow behind it, the arm raised, the sweep, swath of darker dark recollecting and know nothing about her except she'll never be encountered and are inspired with such tenderness as if your own were a story lost. <clears throat> and I'll end with a poem that was written <coughs> uh, during a previous horrible period. I mean, we still have all, many of the same features in the current horrible period, maybe even more of them, I would say, perhaps. So, the evening news, the sword, the ax, the gas, the drone, the tanks, the guns, the IEDs, the stones, the people barefoot bleeding on the road, so close to that wished for coast, the drowned. In dreams, tea poured three times from a silver pot held high, the glinting river or the sea by whose shores mothers and fathers walked, holding their children's hands. Tell me, the morning dew will bathe every blade of grass, every tank down by that river, and steel will rust. Tell me the doors of dawn will open and my scrolled tight heart unclench. Tell me the child in the rubble of the destroyed city still breathes and will be held aloft. And that was it. Thank you so much. Oh, oh, just amazing reading. And that last poem, especially people, you can unmute and clap because I, I think oh. sometimes uh, it's nice to be able to share. Yay. Wow. Excellent. Oh, thank you guys Excellent. so much. I appreciate every, every comment. Oh, wow. Thank you. Yeah, really Cindy wrote something fabulous. No apologies necessary for coughing. All I hear is a magnificent poet. Oh, <laughs> thank you. True, right? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Really I mean, yeah, I, I really, I have some spray that you can use to, you know, moisten your mouth. And of course, I didn't think of putting that on my desk. <laughs> anyway, of not. Of thank you. Not. So it was much. a fabulous reading and, and there are lots of comments. I want to open it up so people can ask questions. We can start talking about, hey, you know, Mary. the recurring themes. And I love Judy that you, um, you know, you talk in terms of like memory and the things that drive your poems. It was really nice to kind of hear some of that. Um, for me, that just added something to the experience of um, listening. Alan just wrote, wonderful Judy, congratulations on the book. I'm enjoying it and enjoyed especially reading oh, long. Nice. Along. Thank you, Alan. It made it doubly good. Does anybody have any questions that you'd like to ask? Okay. The same themes, but playing for higher stakes in this book. So did you want to talk about that, Robbie, what you noticed about this book? Well, you'll probably have to wait until my review comes out. Because it's all about that. <laughs> It's all about that. Oh, cool. Yeah. Fabulous. Fabulous. Hi, Cynthia. I see you. Thank you. Yeah, uh, bye, it Cynthia. focuses on the uh, Adorno quote. Yeah. Okay. Which is central to the, the book. Yeah. And probably could be central to all the other books. Too. Yeah, but even more yeah. than in the earlier books. Well, I can't wait to see the review. I hope it gets accepted. Where yeah. Well, it? Rattle is looking at it in Valparaiso. Oh, Rattle. Oh, that's lovely. Great. Both not rattle, I'm sorry. sorry. Both not guys. rattle. They don't look at anything. I no, they don't look at me. Yeah. No, they hate me um, because of my politics, but uh, Rhino. Yeah, Tim is, is not. Well, we won't go there. We won't go there. Let's <laughs> yeah. not go there. Let's not. Rhino is what I meant because they publish. Oh, Rhino in addition to. Yes, that makes sense. Yeah. So ask me a question, someone. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, so, Judy, 
I will ask a question. Okay, um, Connie. Everybody's experiences have changed in the pandemic. Um, and so I just wanted to, I always like to hear personally how your poetry experiences have changed it, how it changed of you getting a book and how it feels having a book out still kind of on the dangling edge of a pandemic. Yeah. Um, the thing about books is they take so long to complete and so long to get accepted and then so long to come out that actually the large proportion of these poems, just about all of them, were written, almost all of them, written before the pandemic really set in. Oh. So the, the pandemic itself uh, has made me so isolated that some of the kinds of experiences that feed my poems have not been occurring. I mean, um, which the, the experiences of, of <laughs> being with other people, um, and particularly in my case, family, because my family is so distant. And um, how far away, Judy? Well, my son is in the foreign service, and mm -hmm. he has been in Geneva for the last two and a half years wow. with his wife, my daughter in law, and two of my grandchildren. And the last time I saw three of the, out of the four of them was in December 2019. Oh, God. So that's really awful. My yeah. daughter and her family and my two other grandkids live on the East Coast um, in Maryland. And she was so kind as to uh, come out. Well, I had surgery last June and it was not easy. And she came out with her family soon after, which was fabulous. They're both fantastic cooks, she and her husband, Kareem. So, um, you know, it was wonderful. And then my husband had to go to Germany in October and I still wasn't feeling great. And she came out again just to be with me and it was wonderful. It was um, a mother-daughter retreat like we haven't had for ages, ages, ages. And it was so fabulous and I'm so appreciative. So if you're still there, Mara, thank you again. <laughs> um, I think it'd be uh, interesting to have like a study on how isolation affects writing in general. like. You know, how does it change our writing? You know? I think it, I mean, Connie, for me, there were fewer of the stimuli that usually produce writing. Yeah. Yeah. The natural world right. and that moment when you see a grandchild do something that right. you know you're never going to forget or say something that you know you're never going to forget. I had none of that. I mean, my family is not great, especially the Geneva ones. I mean, uh, you know, doing, um, uh, on you know online meetings with hangouts or whatever they're both they're all very very busy that you know several of them have had COVID it's you know it's been a tough year yeah. and because my son is in the foreign service um what he's involved with doing I mean once the un, he who shall not be named uh was out of office um his workload increased um many, many times. So, you know, it got a lot more busy, but I really feel the absence of the, the, the life prompts. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that has been very hard. And then there's, there's not enough of the way those things reassure the poet that there's more poems. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? So I, I felt that. Yeah. I felt that. It was more of a struggle in some ways. Right. No, I did see that. Yeah. yeah. I, I deeply appreciate you asking the question, Connie, and then Judy, hearing you talk about it. And, and just, you know, one of the things that was striking me so much as you were reading is just this beautiful attention to life and people uh, and, and how we connect or are disconnected, uh, loneliness, interior. It was just lovely. And I can see that not having that input for someone who is a keen observer of all things, that that would be uh, something that you grieve um, yeah. and that you feel acutely. Yeah, I mean, and we haven't, because well, it will change now, but, but we actually both been busy with books. And so we've been homebodies except for dinners on the back deck or, you know, once that was possible um, or other outside places pretty much until very, very recently. So um, that's meant a kind of inwardness that is not entirely healthy. And uh, I feel the absence of, 
the thing I was talking about in that poem about that the poem called Charm about you know yeah sort of dissolving in your own room um I felt a lot of that <laughs> yes yeah <laughs> may, may I say totally something? may I say yes something? please Margaret did please. you ever consider um having a zoom meeting with the whole family we do we have um my husband's family which alas is we've lost a couple of people he's one of five and so we have a bi-monthly zoom meeting with my husband's family um which is fun and 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 really nice um i wish i could get the kids to come to that more often but it's a bad time for them so it, it, well, it's hard. we do it once a month and i have five in college and they all get on from their different colleges that's great we play boggle wow <laughs> what oh, you play a game? game and with my uh, my family we used to do that all the time <laughs> right right i mean you know we talk a little bit but then you know most of the time it's either boggle or some other game that they huh. like usually word games and they're all better than i am oh uh, well i've lost that skill it really <laughs> irritates me yes my son <laughs> and my daughter are both phenomenal at boggle it's like we're boggle you know, crazy i play with my right grandson is seven yeah it's fine yeah. consider doing that i mean i think you'd be surprised how many will get on well i think i i need to persuade the kids i mean the problem is when when it's it's 12 here it is you know like 12 noon here it's nine already and the kids are going to sleep oh. in geneva and then it's dinner yeah. time for my daughter's family um okay. well no it's, it wouldn't be if i'm in pennsylvania i know yeah <laughs> yeah yeah no so, but i mean you're, you're right it's just a question of individual families and how what right. their metrics are <laughs> I, I have you know one granddaughter at usc uh law school and she gets uh, on all the time yeah and she's really good maybe i have to try harder and, and at she least get the grandkids the yeah we have had we have had conversations with uh the the switzerland one the, the kids a little bit more often than the parents but um and it's been good you know to do that and my granddaughter did visit in august my oldest granddaughter so that was oh, fun. nice so um nice. She, yeah that was really really great so i wanted to come to something that uh rose wrote uh because it's uh it's uh, it's interesting you quoted a, a song and yeah. probably people do remember i don't oh, know yeah. if you've looked in the chat storming my pain with but so you really felt a deep connection with the poems um that judy was reading of and you course. also have written a a review is that correct yeah I, I i i do know the poems and and i love them but apart from that it's just that uh because judy remembers and she said at the beginning their memories uh i'm of an age where memories are important yeah. my children are far away they live in england i hardly see them my granddaughters have just grown from little babies into young women uh, without me seeing them because of the um, the pandemic, and what Julie Judy writes is is simply strumming my heart too because I'm I'm there with her, mm. and I remember so many of these things that happened to me, and uh, she just says it better. Oh. <laughs> well, I think you're hitting on one of the things that I felt I was reading in the chat section. Is there something so exacting? and so evocative of the language that Judy uses and the way she recreates um, uh, you know, the scene or the memory or the, uh, the realness that a lot of us were going, yes, yes. And I think that's kind of what you're saying, Rose, that she has yes. a particular beautiful gift yes. of um, so bringing here. this, yes. You are expanding so not all those things that are missing. They're beginning to build up again. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Good, good, yeah. good. And you know, there's not really a question in there. I think we just have some praise for Judy. Then is oh. really what we're saying. <laughs> and yes. it's okay too. Well, I'm kind of interested okay. in your your. I mean, we probably don't have time, but in your um, methods of of working, um, especially during the pandemic. I mean, have you found yourself writing in a different way, or? Um, 
Is this no question way. for Connie? I'm sorry. Are we still. You're asking Connie if she. I'm if asking she's, anyone like, really. Oh, I'm all of us. Anyone. Yeah. No. I mean, I, 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 I admit that what you said struck a struck a a, a note because. You say because you don't see, you're not outside, you don't see the, the grandchild, you don't you don't see all these little things you basically hang your poems, uh, poems up on. Yes. Uh, it's very difficult to actually come up with the stuff that you've always written about because it's not there. Yeah. And uh, I find that in the pandemic, I didn't really suffer that much because uh, despite my big mouth, I'm really quite an introvert. So my husband and I were sitting at home quite happily uh, doing our stuff. But uh, I found that with the quietness of it all, I I went more and more inwards and more and yes. more memory and more and yes. more. Um, it just it just got quieter in my head, and I I I I went back to times that I might not have thought about if yes. I had been busier. Yes. Very interesting, Rose. I want to and add to that, though, because I'm going to do the polar opposite. My life is completely insane and often in a constant state of crisis, as Malika knows. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm like rich with triggers yeah. all the time. So yeah. my head's kind of crazy and not quiet. But and you might even be able to hear my screaming grandchildren in the background. Ah, <laughs> so, um, you know, so it's just a really it's a good point, because depending on what you're surrounded by, you know, I'm surrounded mm -hmm. by a lot of mm -hmm. stuff, a lot of yeah. chaos, a lot of stuff that it, even though it's hard to get time to write because it's chaotic, you know, after everybody goes to bed at eight o'clock, <laughs> then it. I, uh, you know, yeah. usually can write. Yeah. Yeah. I understand the difference in those situations right. and I really feel what Rose has said yeah. um, deeply because yes, um, inwardness, memory becomes everything. Yeah. And still waiting for those prompts that... <laughs> I mean, getting out into nature will help because I think we'll, we'll be doing that more now that these books are out and my husband's book is finally finished. <laughs> um, so, I mean, I think that's something we need to make ourselves do because part of the business of being in the house so much is you get kind of used to that. You get kind of used to yes. not having to get dressed properly to go out. Yes. <laughs> you, you know, you get used to the laziness of it. Oh, oh Judy, I mean, I have to confess just now when I realize that that uh, it was nearly seven i raced into the bathroom to put some makeup on because i thought oh god i can't really zoom the way i am this is it. <laughs> and it, it, it's it's very disconcerting to realize suddenly that you're basically in your pajamas <laughs> instead, yeah. of zoom, instead of come as you are it's zoom as you are yeah right i always so do hard. Zoom can be the exception, and you know, it's like my my leftover makeup. I don't think I've got anything new in two and a half years. It's probably lethal by now. It comes out before the Zoom, before this kind of Zoom. You know, not not when I'm talking to my family. Nope, but before the Zoom, yes. Same pair of yoga pants, fifty different shirts. Yeah, Regina yeah. just put. I swapped my robe for a sweatshirt for this occasion. <laughs> You're wow just, you're trading up nice job <laughs> well i'm in we, we i'm that. in zoom yoga every day so i've got the yoga pants on usually. oh there you go oh. Yeah. it's a win-win yeah same old jeans <laughs> well my husband's like um honey are you ever gonna wear anything besides the same pants i'm like well you have the same camo pair of sweatpants you've been wearing so i don't think so <laughs> <laughs> look in the mirror fellow oh yeah and well, then he's like 69 anyone... years old and he wears the jeans with the rips in them i'm like that's like Kind oh, of believe it. Okay. What about there's a poem. There's a poem there. And what about that poor man who actually forgot about it all and got up and he was in his oh, pajama shorts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he had a he had a, um, a, a he had a jacket on and a tie and and he was from, from, from the middle up. He was completely business. And then he had to get get something. He got up and the oh, camera the caught his. Yeah caught his pajama uh, yeah. shorts well and sometimes nothing <laughs> yeah. just like sports day you my know, husband always puts that picture into my mind before my own <laughs> you know you don't have to wear anything though <laughs> there's well, a whole new meaning to come as you are that's right <laughs> <laughs> it really does that's funny robbie <laughs> so i don't want to interrupt but i do have to drop off okay Speaking of chaos I Hi, really good to chaos. see you connie Congratulations, Judy. It was beautiful poetry. 
Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Good luck Love you, to dearly you. Connie. Bye. And let's hope it's a better year for all of us. Gosh, let's. Thank you again, yes. Malika, for hosting. Uh, it was yeah. such a pleasure to to celebrate with you and and to be in such good company. And it was nice to hear people laughing. Uh, you know, I know these are extraordinarily difficult times and, and it does matter, you know, your circumstances and where your loved ones are. And I think that just really honoring that, but also understanding that it's the grace of community sometimes for us just to be Absolutely. in one another's company, yeah. even if it's via Zoom. Absolutely. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you, you all, well, everybody. I just want to add one thing. Yes. I, live, I live in Peru. And I'm usually okay. excluded from everything English. And for me, the pandemic has been a blessing and the Zoom meetings have been a blessing uh, because I suddenly can participate and I yeah. can join everybody and I can hear English and I can exchange poems. And it's for me, it's, it's been absolutely marvelous. And I hope yeah. that some of these Zoom meetings continue because I'm dead happy about them. Yeah, yeah, here, here. <laughs> so interestingly enough for you, the isolation was pro you know, more intense prior and that the Zoom meetings have actually given you a, a larger given sense me, of community. I mean, and I think that's true for, yes. But it's, yeah, given it's, me, true. it's given me the world. It's given yeah. me the world, which I didn't have before. That's very eloquent. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, I think that, you know, some of us are acquainted with this online poetry magazine, Verse Virtual, um, and the whole idea of that magazine was that it, we weren't going to be faceless, ultimately, we were going to understand who the other poets were, and really, that is one blessing of the internet, just its ability to connect us with so many people. It's got mm. its, its, its devilish downside, too, of course, but... <laughs> But, yes, it uh, is. but it is, I mean, I, I know more people on the web than I've ever known. And, yeah. you know, gradually some of those relationships do deepen. So it's, it's cool. Yeah. It's, it makes distance disappear. Okay. You know, you can, you can speak to people that you might not ever have a chance to see face to face. Yeah. Very, yes, yeah, absolutely. very true, Mary. Absolutely. Very true. I, I went back to poetry after 60 years. Uh, Who did? Who is that? Because of COVID. Because I, I so, all these groups on oh, Zoom. Oh, Laura. Okay. Uh, me, Margaret. Oh, Margaret. Margaret. Margaret's I, saying I that this brought her back to poetry. Wow. Zoom, um, and everyone was a poet. Yeah. I've been writing a novel, so I thought, okay, I'll do that too. But I'm going to go back to the poetry too. And it's been an incredible experience. That is cool. I've met the best, you know, the the greatest people. And I I do nothing. My husband died 16 years ago, so I oh. live alone, and I have a lot of risk factors, so I don't go out. Hmm. And I've been writing more than I ever have. Fabulous. Uh, and seeing friends more than I ever have. <laughs> I'm not the guy who invented Zoom to get a Nobel Prize. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that is great. Only after he fixes those backgrounds so your, oh, yeah. your, top, your yeah. head doesn't disappear. Well, or disappear. at least for those of us who have never been able to put one up to have one. <laughs> Why we, need a, we need a True new, story uh, there, Judy. What's that? True story. I've never been able to put one. I can't figure it out. And then when I do, I have no face or no head or so. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. You yeah. need a green screen. <laughs> well, I don't have it. <laughs> You have and to go Regina, buy you it. Had put something I haven't done it yet. there that I wanted to come back to. You said, I find myself more in touch with what I really believe. And I was hoping you might could talk to that just for if you're willing. Sure, sure. Um, you know, I am <clears throat> anybody who knew me pre pandemic um, kind of would recognize or knew that I'm, I'm, I'm an extrovert. Um, I always fancied myself. Uh, being able to be an extrovert and also being able to be introspective. Um, but I think that the, the quiet has really helped me to process through some things. Plus what um, I've seen happen. I've been like paying attention to what people are doing, what people are saying, and even how they're 
interacting, even in virtual spaces like like Zoom. I have just really come to this um, awareness, not just about myself, but the, the diversity of lenses and just um, come to some realizations about what generally we as a, you know, like we, we often struggle with one another, but we basically all want the same things. We, we really kind of all want the same things. Um, and some things are just so ridiculous, you know. Um, I also have um, my thoughts about my connection with my divinity have, um, I think, evolved. Um, and, and, and like I definitely, I grew, I grew up missionary Baptist. Um, and I still am a member at a missionary Baptist church, but I have a, uh, uh, I think this greater connection this, it extends beyond any denomination, extends yes. beyond all of that because of what my grandmother told me, my grandmother would tell me, she said, um, in, I, I remember once in a crisis of faith, she said, uh, Regina, you believe you believe what you know to be true. You know, she said, there's nothing that differentiates uh, 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 of people except for what they, what they experience and what they see. You know who your God is by what your God is able to do. If you're believing in something that, that never has any positive impact in your life, then that's probably not, <laughs> that's probably not. Your, your God, right? So, I mean, just all of those things, things that I don't necessarily force on anyone else, but it definitely has colored my lens as a writer, especially. Um, um, just, very, I've, just very introspective. And plus, I've lost so many people, um, not all from COVID, um, but just being in, somebody said like being in, um, in COVID really made them feel isolated. Um, it, it, it maybe to a for me to a certain extent, but to another extent, it made everything like be magnified, you know. So death was like, oh my gosh, you know. Um, and then plus I'm 54, so <laughs> I'm at an age where I'm young. <laughs> 54? I'm 81. Oh wow! Oh, you know when I'm you said age. after 60 years, I was like, were you like two? <laughs> <laughs> i've had 18 poems published in the last two years wow that's uh, excellent yay, woo, yay. Yay. That is but I fabulous just love doing it yeah, yeah. well um Mar margaret duda you're gonna be like one of my role models because i'm a <laughs> i'm a I, i'm i'm an i'm an english professor so oh. but I, I i teach english um and I've been, a, I'm a lifelong writer, always said I've, I'm a community poet, um, but I, I, when I hit, when the pandemic, maybe a little bit before the pandemic and really into the pandemic, I said, I have to do something with this beyond just what's around me. And Zoom has helped me do that. Yeah. Yeah. So I probably went all off the beaten path, Malika, but. Oh, and I'm glad you did, because I have to say, I have enjoyed this. We've done it a little bit different. Yeah. And I think that we needed kind it. of each other. Yeah, that was, that was lovely just to feel connected. Um, I think you set the tone, Judy. I do. Well, thank you. I so appreciate this. It's just changed my whole month. <laughs> it's just great. Good. So thank, thank you, you again. Everybody be well. Thank you for being here, Judy. Thank, thank you. you for your amazing Thanks, Malika. Thank you Great all. Great company, Everyone. everybody. Thank you. See you later. Well. Love you all. Love, Love you all. You.